All right. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Hey, how's it going, George? I feel silly, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. It's a silly time of year. Um, that's why we're having a good time today, because it's Christmas or holidays or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Call it what you wish. Wish you to people as you see fit. Uh, hey, you're wearing a Festivus is... shirt, so maybe that's exactly. what we so should call it. Happy Festivus. Festivus happy for the rest Festivus. of us. Uh, exactly. Um, but it's this time of year. It's tradition um, for everybody, not just us here at Epifan, to maybe take some time off, celebrate, spend some time with family, and also the inevitable, most painful part, the gift giving. Uh, <laughs> this is a challenge. It's something I, I'm admittedly very bad at. Um, so it's helpful sometimes to run through a list. So Dan, you and I with the help of a few members here at Epifan, put together a great holiday gift list of things to consider, small and large, <laughs> that you might want to give to that nerdy tech AV person works from home, person you like, whatever it might be. We've got a little bit of everything in here, I think. Yeah, but size doesn't matter. It's the thought that counts, George. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the bigger the box, the bigger the thoughts. Um, but but uh, let's jump into it, because we actually have a pretty lengthy list of things that we want to cover here. And what I find helps the most that I put in as the first item, because I think it's the best place to start, is when you need to do some deep thinking, it's probably best to start with some coffee. And uh, I actually think this is an excellent gift. It is certain, it might honestly be the least expensive one on our list as well. So that's a great one. Uh, it is a product, a book that I own myself, which is the How to Make the Best Coffee at Home book, written by a copy professional and, and YouTube uh, star, James Hoffman. Um, it's a great way for anyone who wants to elevate their coffee at home game. It covers literally everything. Um, and it's not huge, it's small, but there's a ton of information in there. Um, so I highly recommend that uh, for anybody who maybe needs to get away, step a few steps back from the Keurig and get into some real coffee. That's an excellent place to maybe make a subtle suggestion that they step up their game. And then of course you can always look at your local coffee shops for great, excellent coffees. This is one that's available here in Canada. That's a specific coffee festive blend. And I will be gifting this to some of my colleagues, um, and I know some of them have had it before and really love it, so I hope they enjoy it when I get around to delivering it. Um, but once we well, get thank our... you, George. Don't spoil all the excitement, going. though. <laughs> well, you know, it's all right. The um, YouTube channel is really cool as well. We should check out the James Hoffman's yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. If you um, want to learn about coffee, that's a place to go. <laughs> and elevating your coffee can elevate your productions, too, because it's good to be well ca caffeinated while you're live streaming yeah. um but another way to elevate your productions is with our i would say probably not one of our number one uh most requested <laughs> wish list items for 2022 and that's the stream deck um mm -hmm. and oh, i think i have one right here look at that uh -huh. um you know i to be honest when i first saw the stream deck a couple of years ago i was like meh <laughs> it's buttons right like how like, good yeah, what, could that what am i gonna do with this um but the cool thing here that uh most people who have never used one might not be familiar with is just the the software and some of the back end of what you can do with the stream deck so things like direct yeah. integrations with obs things like you know controlling the volume on your computer um I favored all my bookmark websites right on there so I don't have to type them in. Like there's just a lot of productivity that you can gain from having a stream deck sitting on your desk, whether you're streaming or not. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I've seen people, you know, graphic design people who set up all their like, you know, Adobe macros and shortcuts and all the sorts of stuff like that. Um, or Dan, like you said, just simple things like computer controls or shortcuts or you know, you can program it in a million different ways. But yeah, if you are a streamer, if you are an AV professional, a live event, you know, producer, whatever it might be, it ties into everything, including Epifan Pearl. It's possible to control one through Stream Deck. And we actually have a video from not that long ago covering that. So um, 
it's just a really great all round thing to have, I think, uh, for just about anybody who uses a computer. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if you don't have a Stream Deck, get just get one. Put it on your wish list. Yeah. It, I think it fits inside of a stocking, too. So uh, you're not yeah. going to break the bank with that. There is a new Stream Deck called the Stream Deck Plus that has not just buttons, but knobs. You could check that out, yeah. too. Um, yeah, and there are non-Stream Deck versions of this, but the Stream Deck arguably has been around the longest and is probably the best. There's a few other companies that have tried to rip it off and have not done quite as good of a job. But maybe the person you're gifting it to already lives in the software ecosystem of one of those other companies, such as Razer. You know, you don't want to want to mix too many of those ecosystems. You know, it, it can get messy quickly. So that might be something to consider as well. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Um, what's next, George? What do you got on your list? Well, inevitably, people who have computers and equipment of all kinds, things eventually do get messy. And I'm a big proponent of fix it, don't throw it. And one of the best ways to fix things is having the right tools. Um, and so there are a ton of different toolkits from iFixit. Not just toolkits, but that is the go-to place if you want repair guides from your iPhone, your Android device, to j laptops. They've got it all in terms of repair guides and the tools to do it. Um, the Mako driver kit that Dan has up there is a great stocking stuffer. I personally own the Manta, which is like their 112-bit set, because it has every bit you could ever need including security bits, the weird stuff, the pentalobes, the tri stuff. So you can crack into any device that <coughs> Apple doesn't want you to get into. Um, <laughs> yeah, they I think have something, the tools to help you. something to point out here with iFixit is it's a cool company because they're very supportive of the right to repair movement, yeah. which, you know, we've talked about on this show. But um, yeah, I mean, again, the kind of a productivity hack, but... I always seem to yeah. find myself spending like 15 minutes trying to find the right screwdriver. Um, exactly. That adds up over time. So yeah, why not just you and know, this is once really and high for quality. all. Yeah, they, these aren't cheap plastic handles like you'd pick up at your corner hardware store. This is all nice, heavy weighted aluminum stuff. They're they're great. Um, I I use them all the time. They're sitting in kind of my workbench behind me, and uh, yeah, this so they're a great one for anybody who likes to tinker or fix things. Uh, like I said, it's going to you get the right kit and it's going to cover everything they need uh, around the house or on their electronics. Uh, next but. up, let's <laughs> let's go from something practical and affordable to something completely <laughs> excessive and absurd. Well, uh, we have two um, versions here, Dan. I think we <laughs> have the excessive and absurd um, in the Samsung Arc. I think a lot of people have seen news around the Samsung Arc. This is Samsung's 55 inch curved computer monitor <laughs> i think they call it a personal <laughs> theater <laughs> yeah i mean this thing is awesome if you look up the reviews on it everyone thinks it's the coolest thing ever but it's also well over three thousand dollars for a monitor so you know <laughs> but i mean yeah if you i have seen it on have, sale for under that if you want to have lcd is it lcd or is it it is yeah but it yeah it, it's just the curve, the size, the fact that you can pivot it from landscape to portrait, like everything about it is just the ultimate, right? You will never need another monitor if you have this thing. Um, and that's that's kind of awesome. But like you said, Dan, that cost is a little bit ridiculous. And Dan, both you and I are fans of ultra wide curve displays. We, we both use them in our homes and in our offices. Um, so if people are a little more budget conscious, but are looking for a really high quality monitor that can do both productivity and gaming. And this is one I actually use on my desk um, every day. And that's this Dell 34-inch uh, curved uh, monitor. It's not the highest refresh rate. It's 144 hertz, so it will do gaming, but it's not 240 like some of the, the high-end ones. But it'll do it. And it's a, a 1440 vertical, which means productivity is awesome on it the difference between a 1080 and a 1440 does make a big difference when it comes to productivity so i love working on this monitor every day uh so and i've seen it at really good prices recently so within the realm of gifting i would say 
Um, so if you have a significant other who works from home and has been losing their mind about their workspace and just not having enough display real estate, this would be an amazing gift, I think. Yeah. The ultra wide is a space saver because basically you're getting it's like you have two monitors in one. So you're actually yeah. going from two monitor stands to one monitor stand, getting rid of a bezel in between them um, is what you're yeah. kind of doing with with an ultra wide. And if you are someone who uses the Adobe Creative Suite um, for your work, Anything? this thing, you're going to love <laughs> making the switch yeah. over to ultra wide. So I uh, can't, can't, can't recommend more highly. Um, I mean, when you think about how many hours a year you spend looking at your compute personal computer screen, um, yeah. it's really an investment in yourself. Um, you know, a couple bucks a day to just increase your productivity times two might be worthwhile. Yeah. Again, I can only imagine when, cause you have a 49 inch ultra wide, I think. And I can only imagine when you switched over to that and being able to see that Adobe timeline all the way across, like just must've world changing. It's, in terms of it's workflow. yeah, it's, it's, it's a big change. It's an adjustment too. I'd say like you need to get kind of used to having all of that peripheral uh, space, but uh, once you get screen adapted, sharing in things like zoom and teams, yeah. is not the best. You're not going to share total screens. You're going to share tabs and windows. Let's put it exactly. That way. Exactly. That's the one I would say drawback is the screen sharing in, and screen captures. Yeah. A little more challenging. So another, <laughs> another really good one, Dan, um, you know, you and I live in the Ottawa area in Canada and uh, sometimes in Canada in winter, it snows and we're actually expecting a whole bunch of it over the next 36 hours. Uh, so <laughs> things might happen. We might have power failures, but more likely we will have Internet outages. What is something we can do to help? <laughs> Well, it's always good to have a backup plan in place, or maybe you um, just are going to be mobile over the holidays, traveling. Um, yeah. You know, it's that time of year when everybody goes to visit friends and family and you don't have their Wi-Fi password. So why not just bring maybe, your own internet connection? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you're working and you're going to be producing the Christmas play at the school or whatever it is, and you need to live stream it. Having a high quality mobile hotspot is a, an, just a great tool to always have for whatever <laughs> your internet situation might end up being. Um, this one, the Netgear uh, MR6150, is the newer upgraded 5G version of the MR1100 that we have used at trade shows around the world for years as the backbone to power our trade show booths, working on the road, streaming on the road, all these things. So now that they have a 5G version, it's it's on my list um, because it's just going to give you that extra flexibility and where you have 5G connectivity, that extra speed uh, is going to be a big deal. I feel One like this we display this, is new too. Is this is this a new It's feature? upgraded. It's it's upgraded. It's better. Um the old one had a display, but it wasn't quite as functional as this one. So mm -hmm. this is definitely an upgrade. The biggest thing I like about these Netgear ones is that a lot of hotspots only offer Wi-Fi, not necessarily Ethernet. These mm -hmm. Netgear ones are very small. They have their own battery, so they don't have to be plugged into main power all the time and offer Ethernet and Wi-Fi and can support external antennas being plugged in. So if people think about that amazing video uh, and time we had uh, last show where we were talking to the guys at First Mile, and we were talking about the importance of antennas when we're trying to get boosted signals. This isn't going to compete with what the First Mile guys do, but you can get something kind of close to that. You know, this isn't a bonding solution, but you could attach external antennas to boost the signal coming into a device like this. So incredibly flexible, nice and small. You can pack it into anything. Uh, again, battery powered so it can run a while without anything plugged into it. So uh, I, I I know coworkers have taken them to their cottage in the summer and, you know, just, just bring it everywhere, basically. So this is a great one for anybody who needs connectivity, no matter where they're going or what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, I'll just make another. I noticed this has Wi-Fi 6, which is mm -hmm. like the new 802.11ax standard, I believe. Yeah. Um, and that can be useful in certain situations. Maybe if you have a congested Wi-Fi networks, 
Um, yep. So just a little side recommendation. Um, here's a little device that you can get for about $100. This is from TP-Link. And this is a Wi. This will put a Wi-Fi six um, network. You can just attach it to your, you know, home Ethernet network or at the office, and add the capability of the Wi-Fi six standard. Which, um, yeah. you know, it's great speeds and it, you know, is relatively more robust to network congestion than uh, previous standards. So. Um, if you're looking for something to upgrade your your Wi-Fi, um, you know you can get this or others like it. Just an access point for some yeah. Wi-Fi six coverage might be useful, especially if you're using your phone. You know, um, all yeah. the new phones support Wi-Fi six now. So if exactly. you are trying to stream out from your device or or, or do other you know um, high bandwidth tasks uh, on your mobile device, Wi-Fi six is pretty nice to have. Yeah. And you mentioned that's a TP link one. Um, you know, everybody, all the major brands have their own versions of those. I do use TP link stuff at home to some degree. And when you buy within the same ecosystem like that, look for ones that also support mesh networking, um, which is what I do because range extenders by and large are not great, but mesh is awesome. Um, so if you are looking at that sort of thing and you're really looking to boost overall your Wi-Fi coverage in your home, um, look to Mesh. Uh, Mesh is going to be the best way to do that. Like I said, everybody, TP-Link, D-Link, Netgear, Asus, everybody makes a version of it, Google Wi-Fi. They're all, they all have their own Mesh ecosystems. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, and then, Dan, I think the other thing, I mentioned we might have power outages in a snowstorm. Another universally accepted, awesome thing to have which from what I've seen is largely starting to replace the gas generator for a lot of people because it's a lot more convenient, uh, in some cases cheaper, smaller, lighter, and that is a honking battery backup power station. So this one in particular, this is literally the model that we dragged up that mountain to do that first mile stream from. I don't recommend doing that with it unless you, I don't know, have a crane or a helicopter or something. But um, <laughs> but um, the reason that this is owned by one of our employees is because sometimes when they have a power failure and they need to run medical equipment off of it, like CPAP machines, or they're traveling for the same reason, or they go camping and they just need to charge devices these sorts of products are amazing to just have as a piece of utility. I have a very small one that we used in the park stream, Dan, and it was awesome. Um, bigger is going to run more stuff and more powerful stuff. So there's lots of options out there. I'm sure anybody who's watched any YouTube videos at all has probably seen stuff from Jackery. They seem to sponsor just about everybody except for us. Mm -hmm. um, but they've they've become a brand name that's common. You, I'm not endorsing them specifically because there's tons of options now. It's, it's a very saturated market. Pick the one that's going to fit your needs the best. But having one of these and having one with a solar panel to help charge it is just such a handy tool to have. That's a nice Christmas present, too. I don't know if anybody is going to be spoiling <laughs> me that much, but... Um, maybe you get the gift certificate to Home Depot and, and can put it towards <laughs> something like this. But I, I also thought the solar panels here are super cool. Um, they are. And yeah. yeah, this is like just as useful for a streamer as it would be for a prepper. So, you know, yeah, exactly. there's 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 a oh, you always need electricity to do the stuff. Well, like and we do, so. we know from our park stream that even the smallest ones available will power something like a Pearl Nano plus a camera, no problem. So you're just trying to put together a piece of road kit. Even a smaller 200 watt hour one will cover you most likely. But if you need to do something like power that first mile uh, command center kind of thing, <laughs> you're going to need a little more juice. Um, so those are things to think about. Uh, speaking of juice, um, we were talking about some juiced up studios recently. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of our comrades, Jeremy has his wonderful studio. Actually, let me just Google it here. Um, <laughs> G man 
studio didn't have that one open and ready i didn't have that i didn't have the tab open but uh well not that long ago we we were in jeremy's studio and did a an episode of this live show from there myself and adam palmer and it was awesome and so i think general idea here is if you're a content creator small business owner um anybody who's trying to create high quality content but you're maybe not quite ready to make the leap and investment into building out your own studio. Number one trend I think we saw in 2022, Dan, at universities, at enterprise, uh, corporate campuses, uh, at home, is people building studios. This includes co-working spaces, which is also a huge pop-up trend everywhere. And that's exactly what Jeremy's done, is he's put a studio in a co-working space that you people can use, they can rent, they can use, and it was awesome. Um, so maybe if you know somebody who's struggling to elevate, but they're not quite ready to go drop 10 grand on building out their own studio, maybe rebook them some hours, give them a gift certificate, uh, a subscription, whatever the model is to a, to a studio near you is an awesome, awesome gift um, to really get people's creative juices going right after they've had all their coffee. Yeah, absolutely. If you live in any major city, like this is a thing now. Um, Yeah. Having, you know, these sort of studio spaces that you can rent. So, yeah, I mean, if I'm just thinking of someone like a real estate agent, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, how perfect would that be to be able to go pop into a studio for an hour a week and talk about your current listings. Um, and you walk in, you record your content and you, and you're done. Um, so just, yeah, a a great way to get your name out there, to get your business out there, uh, or maybe just to have fun with your beer podcast or whatever. Exactly. Start a podcast or, you know, yeah, there's, there's a million different things you can do with it. And, And again, it's something that is a low cost of entry, but high, quality output so that's that's really the advantage there to get high quality yourself though you're going to need a camera and this is something we always talk about here so let's not be shy to talk about some well we got some big cameras here yeah this is i mean this is this is for the uh you know as they say go big or go home <laughs> yeah. this is you might have to ask um, santa if you want one of these because uh you're gonna owe pretty santa awesome, some favors but, but the cool thing here is that um, these Canon PTZ cameras come equipped with SRT and coding yeah, and uh, NDI, so you can get your camera signal wherever you want it to go. Maybe you need to go to the cloud. Uh, maybe you want to send it to a Pearl. Maybe you have locations in different parts of the continent, yeah. other countries. Um, you, you know, you're no longer tethered to an HDMI cable or an SDI cable. You can now send your your fantastic image to just about anywhere in the world with low latency and uh here's a way to do it with with a pretty beastly uh ptz camera yeah um yeah they these ones are big so dan you have up there the n300 which is the entry level version in canon's line (laughs) they also have the n500 and i believe they have an n700 now as well um the n500 is one of the most interesting ptz cameras i've seen in a long time very expensive let's be clear but i can't think of another ptz camera off the top of my head that has things like xlr professional audio inputs on it that's cool so if you are equipping a studio because you are ready to make that leap and you want to build out a really high quality studio you need cameras that support srt ndi have incredible autofocus one inch sensors like just absolutely nuts Canon's got cameras for you for sure. Um, So yeah, like I said, you might be begging Santa owing some favors back, but (laughs) um, you're, you can't go wrong there. Now, if you need to spend a little less, you might not get your SRT, although I really wish that they would add it, but something like the Lumix uh, BGH1, which is a little box camera. And there's a lot of these little box cameras out there, but we recently were speaking with, uh, with our friend John Porterfield, and he's been experimenting with this camera, and he says it's been an awesome experience. It's very small, very lightweight, which means he's been putting it in churches to, to shoot um, their streams. This is a great 
great option from a company like Panasonic Lumix that's going to have SDI out, HDMI out, remote control over things, swappable lenses. Um, so, you know, these these box cameras are are becoming so commonplace. They're just so flexible. Uh, so this is a great one, a, g- a great option. It's going to save you a bit of money over something like a Canon PTZ camera, but it's also not going to give you all the PTZ stuff. So, you know, figuring out which one is going to work best for you uh, is important. But I think that if you're looking to elevate the camera game, get some flexibility with interchangeable lenses and a ton of settings and high quality stuff, then, you know, something like in these box cams like the uh, the BGH1 are a great, great choice. Um, and I've, I've, people have been using them as their webcams, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't have to break the bank with one of these. And, you know, it's no. kind of like taking the modular approach where you can just start with the brain of the camera and then build out from there. So exactly. choose your lenses. Maybe you want to get like a top handle or uh, a viewfinder or things like that. You add them on as you go. So you don't exactly. have to uh, you don't have to go big right away. So, uh, yeah. yeah, really nice option. Um, so you another to upgrade your home setup. Yeah, for sure. Did we have another camera we were going to talk about, or oh, I well, guess we're just talking about um, some of the bigger ones right now. But we have a couple. Little, yeah, little the ones main for thing your is though, I think at this point, Dan, you know, we're not that far away from three years of a lot of things changing in the world, including people working from home, and some people have adapted really well to it. Um, other people, not so much. And the ones that I say not so much, I really mean people that haven't still really tried to upgrade their home setups. At this point, they work in a profession where they probably should, but it still kind of looks lackluster. It just doesn't have that that quality that I think everyone has come to expect. And so we have a bunch of suggestions. <laughs> um, and these are all actually very reasonably priced um, for, for things to look at that can make a massive difference in improving your home setup. The first one is audio, right? If your audio sucks, everyone turns out, uh, tunes out. So audio should be first on the list. Um, stop, stop using the built-in microphone on your laptop. Stop using your AirPods. Get a good mic. And something like the Blue Yeti, is a great choice. There's lots of high quality USB microphones like the Yetis out there. Um, It's certainly not just them. They're just extremely well known and very readily available everywhere. That's a, that's a great place to start. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeti is becoming a legendary microphone at this point. Um, I've got one. I'm using one right now. (laughs) Right here as well. Um, I'm not using this one right now, but I, it's white. Uh, You can get them in different, in different colors, depending on, uh, what your setup looks like or what you want your setup to look like. Um, yeah. The other cool thing here is like, they've got the pickup patterns, right? So you can adapt yeah. this for doing voiceover or if you're doing something where maybe you have two people, you can, you know, isolate their audio from the room noise yeah. a little easier. So yeah, I can't, can't recommend Yeti highly enough. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they go on sale all the time as well. Like you oh, always they see do. them yeah. around $125 and then, you know, around Black Friday and after Christmas, they be tend down. to yeah. be under $100. So just wait till it goes on sale if you are going to buy one. Yeah. The other thing that I think a lot of people struggle with is lighting. And I'll I'll, I'll fully admit, um, I'm recently moved. I'm still working on my home office setup. And lighting is still the thing I'm struggling with, especially this late in the day in the frozen north. There's no sun. It's practically dark outside um and dan same thing with you you're yeah you can tell right now in the room i'm being (laughs) darker and darker lighting is pretty important as well and there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of options out there we're not going to really name anything specific here but get yourself a couple of good led lights that you can place around your office home office setup just to get a little more key and fill on you you don't have to necessarily go crazy with full three point, but just get a little more light on you uh, because most of us are staring at a wall when we're sitting at our desk and there's no light there. So try to get something mm-hmm. onto your face uh, so that you're not just hiding in the shadow. Yeah. Um, so or even and those go can be and get very some, cheap. 
get some light bulbs. You know, you go those RGB light bulbs, smart bulbs. Yeah. You can make them any color, so you can create some accent lighting or some practicals. I've got the uh, Govi. Um, it's like the corner lamp or whatever, but it's mm-hmm. basically just like this bar, and I can do all kinds of cool effects with you know just the phone app is just amazing what you can do with this thing so you can have a lot of fun with it but um you know other things like these little uh this is a viltrox led panel it's like 100 bucks um i think adam was just showing um the aperture light um yeah on the website those are really great and have rgb as well so yeah, I there's these there's, guys on a on a stick, you know, whatever whatever you need. Um, yeah, like a, under under a hundred dollars, you can find some really cool options. And now that everything is a smart bulb and has color yeah. adjustment, you know, it just makes sense to get some fun lights, yeah. and you can have have a whole lot of fun um, regardless of your setup. Um, just Absolutely to get some color creativity and light. for sure. Yeah. Um, now, what else we course, got? Well. You've improved your audio, hopefully. You've lit your room a little bit better so you're not in a dungeon. Um, but ultimately, the webcam built into your computer still sucks. Mm-hmm. So let's improve that. Um, easiest way to do that is look at some of the higher quality standalone webcams out there. Uh, a couple of great options we've talked about in the past are things like Insta360s, uh, you know, camera. This thing is super cool. We talked about it in the past. You can go back and look at it. But it's just so multifunctional it's super super cool it's basically a little mini micro ptz camera that can do all kinds of fun things um and so that's a great choice especially for someone who maybe has to do a lot of demonstrations it's got modes to like look down on your desk if you need to show something um so there it has gesture control it's just cool it's a cool camera the other one would be arguably what most people consider today uh, the best sensor, the best lens in a webcam, and that would be something like the Elgato FaceCam Pro. Um, this is a, you know, they 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 say it's the first USB webcam that'll do 4K 60. Um, you know, it, they've certainly jumped a lot in optics. For me, I still not the choice I personally would make, but things I do like about it is the sensor seems to be great. It has a fully detachable USB-C cable, which means you can replace the cable. You can get a longer cable. So there's some good functional things about it as well. It's a chunky Um, boy. It is. I mean, you get a sensor that does 4K60 is no joke. Um, And I'll note, it's about $400. So then you got to ask yourself, if you're going to spend $400, why Mm -hmm. not just buy yourself a Canon M200? (laughs) Exactly. Um, And so then we're, yeah, as you get up into that prices, mirrorless cameras enter the equation. And Dan, I know you use an M200 at home, right? Yeah, I'm using M200 right here at my desk. It's my go-to. I It's set and forget. I don't have to press a single button on it. I don't even have to turn it on. It just works. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. I know lots of people at Epifan are uh, are a big fan of this camera, so... Um, if you I are looking the other for nice a, part. a Sony, you could you could do something similar, like an A6400 yep. mirrorless. You do have that option. Yep. So maybe you're already in the 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 Sony ecosystem. This might make oh, yeah. sense for you. Um, the other benefit here, as opposed to you know, if we're comparing this to the Elgato Face Cam, is hey, it's still a camera. You can take it <laughs> off your desk. You can go take some amazing photos with it. You can shoot video. Um, yeah. you know, you've got a memory card in there so you can record. Um, so you can change the lens. Maybe you want a prime lens. Maybe you want a variable lens. Like you have the flexibility and the option. I would say one drawback to this, but also a pro, I would say equally pro and con is that cameras like this, like the M200, or I use the Sony a5100, um, is that it typically means for the best quality out of these cameras, you're going to need to run them through a capture card. Now, some of these cameras do have software support to turn them into webcams, like I know Canon does that. The quality over those software plugins is not great. Um, Taking the HDMI out and bringing that into a capture card, like an Epifan AVIO HD+, which is also an awesome gift to someone, adds some cost, but also 
adds another level of flexibility because now we have a capture card that can capture basically anything over HDMI. So now they want to capture a gaming console, another computer or a piece of equipment or different cameras, any of them that have HDMI. This is something, you know, I put this together with the cellular router and the battery as just something that's handy to have in the toolkit in case you ever need to capture something. Um, So pairing that with a great quality camera uh, is no brainer in my mind. Yeah, it's one of those essentials in your kit is having a capture card and something portable and rugged like AVIO Plus, AVIO HD Plus. Um, Yeah, you can't go wrong. (laughs) Uh, That's what I'm using right now. (laughs) Yeah, I'm using the I'm using the 4K. So so there there's there's what I've got. And you know what? Uh, the, The HD would do just fine for me as well because i'm not actually i don't have my camera on 4k but if i ever want to capture 4k hey i've got that that option exactly yeah the last one i think we want to throw in there got one more we've got one more we've got a we've got a good list going here what's what do you got we do the last one if you know someone who has been struggling with remote video production Mm -hmm. the best thing you could probably get them is Epifan Connect. (laughs) Um, Epifan Connect is changing the game. It's what we're doing right now to produce this show. It's what it's enabling Dan and I to be in our respective homes, funnel our data easily, simply to our producer, Adam, in the background, who's putting this all together and streaming it out to YouTube for you guys. Connect makes it so easy. And anybody who has been struggling with ways of doing remote video production, this is a game changer and they really need to check it out. Um, So, you know, I would say even just sending them the link to it or sending them the link to our multiple videos that we've produced on it recently, that itself is probably gift enough, but (laughs) you could pre-buy. The gift of knowledge. Exactly. Uh, It's it's a major thing. and, And certainly I would recommend anybody who needs remote production tools, works within the Microsoft Teams ecosystem, you got to check it out. Um, it's absolutely a game changer. And I know we have some more videos coming out about it soon, which I'm really excited for. Um, I know you've been working on those, Dan, so I can't wait until those go live. Um, but it, yeah, it it changes everything. So you got to check it out. And you get a free month. So now's a good time exactly. to, uh, now's a good time. You can to tell them it. you paid for it, but it's actually free. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We just tell them um, Dan and George sent you and, uh, exactly. <laughs> autographs. But that's our stuff. list. That's our list. Um, so Dan, maybe join me in the kitchen for a moment for, uh, a little coffee break after our listing. And, uh, we'll talk very quickly about what's been going around Epifan recently. Let's do it. Let's head over to the kitchen. So. We've had a lot of fantastic new blogs published. Um, There's one about OBS and Teams, which I think is really, really cool. Um, Lots of great detail in there. There's another one about how to host a virtual product launch, which is something we see all the time. It's become the standard thing. We do that. Companies (laughs) big and small. We do it. Yeah. Uh, So it's a great blog about that. Um, Five ways to live stream with guests remotely. Um, Obviously, there's going to be stuff in there about Epifan Connect and other options, but excellent, excellent knowledge in there. And then the last one, there's how to produce live events with Microsoft Teams. And that's probably one of the biggest questions I get asked every day. Um, So we have this awesome blog talking all about that. And, uh, And so I highly recommend you check them out. And Dan, I know, you know, you... You see these in draft form as the guys are writing them and putting them up. Um, which which one of these was your favorite? Um, I'd have to go with uh, this one, actually, how to produce live events with Microsoft Teams, just because um, live events is something that is notoriously difficult to merge the virtual world and the on-premise event. Mm-hmm. We call it the hybrid production um this just changes the game with that this makes it possible to bring in guest participants from anywhere um and make it feel like everyone's you know connecting in the room together it just creates we've had some people say it almost feels like you're watching a television show and it really just takes your your 
event to the next level to create that video experience where participants can be at both on premise and remote and uh, everyone can share their message and interact and uh, just a super uh, easy way to get people involved in your video experience. So, um, yeah. Yeah, this this yeah, one's def- definitely this is from our writer Ian and he did a really fantastic job on this. So if you want to learn a bit more, yeah, have a fan.com slash blog. For sure. So I think that's gonna wrap us up. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you appreciated our insights into the things you should be gifting. Uh, there's a great number of things there, large and small, like we said off the top. And so hopefully there's a little bit of inspiration there for you. Um, Our next episode will be on December 29th, where we are going to pull out our annual prediction bucket, (laughs) and we're going to talk all about were we right, were we wrong, what's coming next year. Honestly, it's one of my favorite shows of the year because I love finding out that we were absolutely bang on the money every time. We've never made an incorrect prediction. (laughs) The problem is our predictions actually are very accurate. They're just two to three years we're actually too far ahead of the curve in many <laughs> cases. Now we're seeing yeah. all this question about like AI artwork and AI image and AI, AI artificial intelligence that has been on our prediction list. And I feel like that's just in the Did recent you play weeks. Did chat been... bot? Dude, it's insane. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild times we're living so. in. So yeah, lots of predictions anyway. to be made. How will this all unfold? So. Let's, yeah, so make sure to, to subscribe well. to the YouTube channel. Follow us on all the social places, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, here on YouTube. Um, send this link to somebody. If uh, there's something you wanted from this list and you need to inspire someone else, send them a link to this video. Share it all out there. And uh, again, follow, like, subscribe in all those places. And we will see you in the next one. And then after that, it will be a new year. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, looking forward to it, George. Thanks for joining me today. And to everyone in chat, we see you there. Brian, Marta, uh, Nick, everyone else. Thanks for joining us and uh, happy holidays. We'll see you. Bye-bye.